In this video, we'll try and understand what is the economics behind demonetization. This is not the first time that demonetization has happened in India. In 1978, the government did something like this and got rid of 1000, 5000 and 10,000 rupee notes. After 38 years, if something like this happens again, it is definitely worth paying attention as to what is the economics behind such a step. So first thing first, demonetization helps massively in tackling black money in the economy. Black money is also called as parallel economy. It is the money that is totally unaccounted or not declared for tax purposes, but still circulates in the economy. Usually higher denomination notes are used in most of the transactions. Hence, it makes perfect sense for using 500 and 1000 rupee notes for accumulating black money. And also higher denomination notes take less space, which further simplifies the idea. So a massive takedown on these high notes is a powerful step towards curbing black money. Second point. Demonetization will reduce the money circulation in the economy. Now, it is a known fact that many countless daily transactions are the basis of corruption in a country. Currently, the total Indian currency in circulation is divided in the following manner. 39% of the entire Indian currency comprises of 1000 rupee notes, 45% are 500 rupee notes, and the rest are in terms of 10, 50, and 100 rupee notes. Now, halting 84% of the currency will definitely lower the money circulation in an economy. When there is less money in hand of people and firms, they will spend less, that will lead to lesser transactions. Third point, demonetization will boost bank deposits and savings. People will head to banks to deposit old notes. By controlling the money circulation in the economy and forcing people to deposit their money in the banks, the current accounts and saving accounts deposits will increase and that will replace the high cost of borrowing and lower the overall cost of funds. This will lead to decline in lending rates, which will boost economic activity in the medium term. But on the flip side, we expect banks to reduce the deposit rates because when you are lending money to businesses and firms at lower interest, you cannot give high interest to the depositors. Fourth point, demonetization will play a major role in financial inclusion. To deliver financial services at affordable costs to sections of disadvantaged and low income segments of society, which has been more than a decade old plan will finally be possible. Remember Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, which was launched in August 2014? Till now 25 crore bank accounts have been opened under the scheme with zero balance facility. This demonetization drive will give a push to cash deposits in Jandhan accounts. In addition, the move will help to inculcate banking habits among those who do not have the habit as well as access to the services of a bank. Fifth point. Demonetization will help in supporting government finances, that is the budgetary transactions of the central and state governments. It comprises of revenue receipts, revenue expenditure, capital expenditure, capital receipts, fiscal deficit, etc. These are together known as budgetary transactions. Now coming to the point, with demonetization, unaccounted money somehow makes way into the main channel and this benefits the government by collecting higher income tax. The more tax the government receives, the more the government spends in development and non-development expenditure, which is directly related to infrastructure and economic development of a nation. Sixth point, demonetization will help in long-term GDP growth. Now that black money is somehow making its way to the bank, that is the main channel, there's going to be a huge collection of tax by the government. Now try to understand this. The government is also determined in rolling out the GST bill. With the GST architecture, the government will be able to tax commercial transaction efficiently, which will move the Indian economy from unorganized to organized sector. And needless to say, this will also improve the GDP ratio of various sectors in the economy. In the short run, some sectors such as real estate, construction, retail will face the heat, but long-term benefits of GDP growth will outweigh such short-term impact. Long-term forecasts and scenarios are vital for nations that are making strategic decisions. Now coming to the seventh and the last point, demonetization teaches a great lesson on behavioral economics. People's psychology towards 500 and 1000 rupee notes have changed to an extent that many are paying off their debt with their old currency because it's psychologically pleasing to do this rather than get taxed. And also the dishonest people would no longer get to display their wealth and that will bring respect and harmony among the honest ones in the society. Dowry, illegal activities and other immoral social practices will reduce due to white money. So these are some really great possibilities that will push our nation towards overall development. So in the end, economics helps us in predicting and forecasting future events. 
we need to see demonetization as a step towards hitting a reset button. A reset button unlike any other button or option because here the nation is at stake. You don't get to use this kind of step every now and then. Now that we have hit that button, with a little bit of patience, cooperation and willpower, our country can sail through and become a land of great opportunity. If this is useful to you guys, let me know by leaving a comment or if there is something you would like to see more of. And if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. And last but not the least, don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more of such analysis and perspectives. So as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.